Can you see this creature? Can you stand looking at it much longer, or are you brave enough to admit that you fear worms? If yes, you should be cautious because this video will be infested with those tiny slimy things until the end. Worms are invertebrate creatures with long, soft bodies, no legs, and frequently cylindrical shapes. Depending on where they could be found, they may or may not have appendages or eyes. Although they may look attractive due to their physical features, they could be more pleasing to see inside your aquarium. So, if you're a fish keeper and have vermintophobia or helmintophobia as well, it would be best if you stuck around and faced your fear, because for today's video, we will discuss the types of worms that could take over your fish tank, as well as the ways on how to get rid of them. I know it's difficult to avoid having goosebumps, but I promise this will be worth it for you and your fish. Most aquarists aspire to have stunning fish tanks teeming with aquatic life, but occasionally the critters that emerge need to be more welcome. This could cause you to ask, how does it get into my tank? How can I get rid of it? There are answers to that. Worms are one of the many pests that may appear in aquariums and are frequently to blame. And since they are the topic of this discussion, knowing their ancestors and identity is the first thing you would like to do. To help you with that, we will begin the video with the four common types of worms that could infest your fish tank. Are you ready? Let's continue with our first worm on the list, detritus. Segmented worms, known as detritus worms, are abundant and non-lethal. Although many aquarists would prefer to keep worms out of their tanks, detritus worms make an excellent addition to your tank's cleaning team. These worms put a lot of effort into eating decomposing matter, which keeps the tank clean and the water quality clean. Since they are half segments, debris worms belong to the same family as common earthworms. There are many various kinds and sizes. They are typically little white worms, some of the largest ones reach an inch in length. Although they can be discovered hidden in other areas such as your aquarium's filter material, detritus worms typically inhabit the substrate. Detritus worms can be visible everywhere, including at the water's surface in an aquarium as their number rises. Detritus worms are transported with fresh fish and plants in gravel, filter media, water, or aquariums. They are common in fish aquariums and are very harmless. Maintaining high water quality and dissolved oxygen levels, cleaning your tank, vacuuming the gravel, and avoiding overfeeding and overstocking your tank are all things you should do to stop a detritus worm population boom. The second worm you want to avoid having in your tank is the planaria. Another typical aquarium problem is planaria worms. You may find these worms primarily in freshwater aquariums and they have been seen to consume both young and adult shrimp that have just molted or are weak. Turbularia family flatworms are called planaria worms. These flattened worms are easily recognizable because of their triangular shaped heads and two open eyes. Because they are unable to swim, they are frequently spotted crawling. Planaria worms are typically found on aquarium glass, substrate, or both. Since they can't swim, you won't find these flatworms in the water column. It's usually a good idea to quarantine new fish and dip new plants before adding them to your tank if the presence of this worm bothers you. Using traps or chemical products made specifically for planaria worms is another way to control their population. The third type of worm is called anchor. These critters' names are a little puzzling because they are actually crustaceans and the apparent worm-like portion is the female reproductive system. Under the fish's skin, they also have a mechanism that resembles an anchor that keeps them anchored. I bet you already know why they are called anchor for some reason. Although wide varieties of anchor worms and many different fish species can impact cyprinid fish, goldfish, and koi are the main species that are afflicted. To eliminate anchor worms, you may quarantine your animals before introducing them to your fish tank using chemicals to cure or remove them from your fish. You can try these chemical treatments shown on your screen. And finally, the last type you would want to avoid encountering in your tank is the Camelanus. Small populations of Camelanus worms can go undiscovered, but it can be rather worrying when you do. 
These parasites are the crimson slender worms that emerge from the fish's anus. They are not constantly visible since they can regress into the host fish's body. By adding animals and fish from other contaminated sources such as pet stores or friends' tanks, Camelanus worms can enter fish tanks. The best course of action is to take drugs like Fenbendazole. Thankfully, when used as directed, these antihelminthic medications are harmless for invertebrates like shrimp and snails. Now that you know the four common types of worms you can encounter inside your fish tank, it's time to learn how to control them by removing them and applying treatments. But before we continue that discussion, it would be awesome if you gave this video a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button for your regular updates of information on the fish keeping hobby. You can also visit our YouTube channel and watch all the videos we made about different types of fish that you might fancy adding to your tank. Where was I again? Ah, we're down on discussing how to remove and apply treatment for worms in the aquarium. You already know the first step in worm removal, right? It is to determine what kind of worms you have and what caused them. After you've figured it out, you may create an action plan and the method you can execute can be started by Avoid introducing these worms into your tank. As the saying goes, it's always better to prevent problems than to fix them. Even if you already have a worm issue, stopping further introductions is a good idea. Let's look at some tips for keeping undesirable animals out of your aquarium by reading the information shown in your screen. Another way to prevent worms is by maintaining good water quality in your aquarium. Worm infestations may be brought on by poor water quality, which can also make an already problematic situation worse. They thrive in poor water quality conditions, weakening your fish's immune system and leaving them more vulnerable to parasite assaults. The following factors mainly bring on water quality issues on your screen. Be sure to run a high quality filter, carry out regular partial water changes and conduct routine water tests to maintain the water quality in your tank. Using a gravel vacuum might be the best option if the second method doesn't suit you. Weekly thorough cleanings of your aquarium are a crucial component of aquarium upkeep. Your gravel vacuum is one of the most helpful tools for maintaining the water quality in your tank and avoiding bug issues. You may eliminate the worms, larvae, and the remaining food and garbage that feed them by vacuuming the substrate. The fourth method you can use to get rid of those worms is a trap. Using traps to reduce the number of tenacious worms like planaria can be successful. While you won't be able to get rid of them all this way, it's a fantastic alternative for aquarists who would prefer not using chemical treatments. A worm trap is a tool enticed with a food supply, such as frozen bloodworms or shrimp flesh. The planaria worms then fall into the trap, making it simple for you to get rid of them. However, for fish keepers, you must remember that leaving a lot of bait in your tank for a long time will lower the water's quality and result in severe ammonia surges. We don't want that happening, hobbyists. Introducing predatory fish to your tank is another excellent choice. Loaches and other predatory fish can be beneficial in the case of non-parasitic worms like planaria and detritus worms. Even if the fish cannot destroy completely Eratus these worms, they will still assist in keeping the number in check because they are regarded as a delectable food. Your fish will unfortunately become victims and helpless when it comes to parasites like anchor worms and camelanus worms. And finally, the last method on our list is chemical treatment. Even though many aquarists would instead not use them, there are situations when drugs and chemical treatments are the only choices. The fastest and most effective way to eliminate dangerous parasites like anchor worms and camelanus worms is to do so. Several products are available that you can purchase online or at your local fish store. You can use Ferbendazole to treat your fish tank infested with worms as a chemical treatment. This will eliminate planarians in your aquarium due to its active canine dewormer feature. You can also try an antihelminthic drug called Levamisol that has the potential to be highly efficient in controlling nematodes like camelanus worms. Sadly, an overdose of this drug can harm shrimp and several fish, including loaches. So be careful when using this, fish keepers. Apart from those two chemical treatments, Dimelin could be your substance of choice that is particularly effective in reducing anchor worms infestations. Nonetheless, because of the treatment's potency, you must calculate doses cautiously. 
that's a lot of worms for today's video. Phew! You're not alone if you're struggling with an aquarium worm issue. Trust me, you are not. Many aquarists or hobbyists often don't notice the existence of these worms in their tanks. That's why you're so lucky to have watched this video because you'll get full awareness on how to get rid of them. However, be reminded that not every worm in a fish tank is harmful. To choose the most effective course of action, if you discover any worms in your fish tank, identify them as precisely as possible. Fish tank worms enter our aquariums through other tanks' animals, items, or natural water sources. They frequently come in with aged aquarium filter media, plants, fish, water, and gravel, so you must always check these things regularly. And that's all for today's video, fish keepers. If you want to watch more of our videos about fish, tanks, and other aquatic matters, visit our YouTube channel and subscribe. If reading is your hobby, you can follow our website at AquariumStoreDepot.com, where many blogs about fish are posted. Always remember to check your fish tank to avoid any pests swimming around alongside your precious fish. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on our next video.